Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India A very warm welcome to you all in this course on Sociology of Sanitation. This is the ninth lecture in the series of ten lecture on Sociology of Sanitation. This ninth lecture is dedicated to government policies and programs related to sanitation in India. In the last eight lecture, we focused upon the issues related to international scenario according to the situation of sanitation. In that, we discuss the relevant data provided by World Health Organization. At the same time, we touched upon the issues related to sustainable development goals, especially the sixth sustainable development goal, which is related to our sanitation and environment issue. This discussion is based on, right now we are discussing on different programs and policies framed by different governments during particular time. Dear learners, you should understand that these are the different policies and programs framed by the concerned authorities, but the success of all these programs depend upon our hard work, our dedication and our involvement with this program as an active member of the society. As you all know that government alone cannot do anything, not even any NGO, any international organization, but we the members of the society, if we consider, yes, it is our program, yes, it is our problem, only then the issue can be resolved. So, of course, these are the different programs, uh, but the success lies on wholehearted conviction shown by we the members of the society. Now, we will discuss one by one all the different programs related to sanitation. First important program related to sanitation in India was launched in 1986. In 1986, Central Rural Sanitation Program was launched with the objective that improving the quality of life of the rural people to provide privacy and dignity to women. Dear learners, do remember perhaps sanitation was more problematic issue for women, that is why it is related to dignity to women. It means even during that time it was realized that sanitation and issue of toilet etcetera was closely related to the dignity of women, that is why in its core objective it is clearly written that privacy and dignity of women. In 1919, total sanitation pro campaign was launched and under restructured central rural sanitation program, it was started, total sanitation campaign was started again to promote sanitation and related issues in rural areas. The objective of the total sanitation campaign was formulated and all these objectives are as follows. Bring about an improvement in the general quality of life in the rural areas. Another, accelerate sanitation coverage in rural areas to access to toilet to all by 2012. Do remember Right now, we are also talking about open defecation free society and every household should get the toilet facility. And fortunately, while discussing the data related to sustainable development goal, we discussed that in 100 percent districts of India, we are having toilet facility. But what is the ground reality that we are supposed to understand? And it was part of the objectives of total sanitation campaign also that access to toilets to all by 2012. 
another it was part of that total sanitation campaign to motivate communities and panchayati raj institutions promoting sustainable sanitation facilities through awareness creation and health education of course we all know the importance of awareness we all know the importance of education whether it is field of sanitation environment or any other field because unless until we are aware how can we understand that yes it is necessary for my life it is necessary for the society at the same time when we talk about health education of course it is part of because you might have heard that young children they are studying in their different school education or university education that what is the importance of environment what is the importance of surroundings in that way we try to inculcate even in that young age the importance of sanitation and through various stories they will be able to associate themselves that yes sanitation environment they are my close friend and different trees plants animals birds we are all part of this planet so when there will be close connection between individuals and the different aspects of environment only then we can say that yes we can protect the environment so of course it was part of that campaign also that health education and of course awareness awareness is necessary not only for particular promoting particular campaign but any time anywhere you all are supposed to learn something about the related programs at the same time if you think that some of my friends some of my relatives some of my coworkers they are not well aware of different programs or they are not aware of these importance related to sanitation it is our moral responsibility to let them know that well these are the different aspects of environment and sanitation and you are supposed to follow all those do's and don'ts which are supposed to be followed by a sincere and an active members of any society another is that in rural areas cover schools by march 2008 and anganwadis by march 2009 with sanitation facilities and promote hygiene education and sanitary habits among students of course students are considered as most important part of any society because if they are trained in a particular way they are the future of the society when we focus on a special provision in school the sanitary facility or hygiene we all remember that of course number of things are associated to education and environment because we discuss while discussing gendered aspect of sanitation that number of girl children are bound to drop out of school simply because of the non availability of the toilet facility so if we provide proper arrangement of toilets in the school maybe we are indirectly ensuring the presence of number of girl children in the school at the same time if sanitation facilities are available then in school children learn how to maintain our environment clean at the same time if we provide them proper opportunity to get sufficient drinkable water then they may get that habit that okay all the facilities are available so why not to attend the schools so we are supposed to ensure all the infrastructural facility in schools also and it was part of total sanitation campaign also another objective of total sanitation campaign was to encourage cost effective and appropriate technologies for ecologically safe and sustainable sanitation of course as we all know that cost effectiveness is most important part for any programs for anything in our day to day life and a program also because in india we are having varieties of people they are having different economic status so if we plan something if we think that anything we are doing that is cost effective that is going to be long lasting so that was part of its objective another objective was to develop community managed environmental sanitation systems focusing on solid and liquid waste management of course if community is there to handle all these things 
necessarily success will be there because the local people know wonderful things regarding that local areas. In 2003, another scheme that is known as Nirmal Gram Puraskar, that was there in 2003. The purpose of Nirmal Gram Puraskar was to give a fillip to the total sanitation campaign. Government of India launched the Nirmal Gram Puraskar in October 2003 and gave away the first awards in 2005. Nirmal Gram Puraskar seeks to recognize the efforts made by Panchayati Raj institutions and institutions who have contributed significantly towards ensuring full sanitation coverage in their areas of operation. Total sanitation campaign lays a strong emphasis on information, education and communication, capacity building and hygiene education. Dear learners, of course, when we talk about Nirmal Gram Puraskar, of course, every gram will not get that, every village will not get that award. So, that feeling of competitiveness will emerge and whenever there is any competitiveness, it is always healthy and it is always good. Another thing is that it emphasizes on information, education and communication that is IEC. When we get any information, we are supposed to spread that message, we are supposed to communicate to others. So, from that angle it is said that information is necessary and it is another aspect of that, that it should be communicated to each and every one. And when local people will understand all those issues related to that program, then necessarily that will be helpful for the society. The Nirmal Gram Puraskar is having following objectives. First is to bring sanitation to the forefront of social and political discourse for development in rural areas. Of course, it was the first priority and first objective of Nirmal Gram Puraskar. Second was to develop open defecation free and clean villages that will act as models for others to emulate. Of course, as we keep on discussing that if my one behavior is going to affect the others, same if one village will show that yes, we can do and we are successful in doing particular thing, then perhaps the other society may start considering that village as an ideal village or a model village and they may also do that. So, for open defecation, we have been working since long and it was also part of this particular program that we are supposed to declare ourselves open defecation free because open defecation has a number of problems related to environment, related to sanitation, related to dignity, related to other aspects of the life. That is why open defecation also occupies important place in the objective of Nirmal Gram Puraskar. Another was related to, to give incentive to Panchayati Raj institutions to sustain the initiatives taken by them to eliminate the practice of open defecation from their respective geographical area by way of full sanitation coverage. As you are aware, in number of areas, different techniques, different local things are there to declare that yes, we should be declared as open defecation free area. And for that, people either they take uh, care of others also or they motivate others that know it is bad or how is it going to help you uh, disturb your total health and other things. Through various methods, people they try that others should not go for open defecation at every level people they are trying and that was part of that scheme also. Another to increase social mobilization in total sanitation campaign implementation by recognizing the catalytic role played by organizations in attaining universal sanitation coverage. Of course, when we say that universal sanitation coverage means it talks about a number of things. When we may achieve particular thing in particular area, 
but when our target will be that of course, at larger level we should achieve no one should go or no one should allow to uh, go for open defecation. If one is there, then other may start copying particular individual. So, at universal level, at larger level, if we think that yes, open defecation should be stopped, then the success of that campaign will be successful and that was part of that com campaign. Next, in 2008, another program, another policy was there that is National Urban Sanitation Policy. As we discussed that first that was related to rural area, rural program, it is related to urban sanitation policy. It the vision of National Urban Sanitation Policy is like that. All Indian cities and towns become totally sanitized, healthy and livable and to ensure and sustain good public health and environmental outcomes for all their citizens with a special focus on hygienic and affordable sanitation facilities for the urban poor people and women. Here the urban poor and women they are of special attention because in urban area generally we consider urban people are very rich, but we are supposed to understand in urban area there are large number of group who are poor people. So, in this vision a special focus is given on urban poor people and urban women because urban area women face more problem compared to rural area because they are having number of other responsibilities other than that if they are bound to go for open defecation or they are having a scarcity of water they have to manage because women manage the household. So, they have to manage if they do not get sufficient water to manage they do not get sufficient water for sanitation and other things how will they manage at the same time if we are unable to provide the poor people in urban areas the affordable sanitation facility how can we think that well urban areas are there urban areas are good generally urban areas are considered as good but we generally focus on certain group of people those who stay in urban area but simultaneously we should think about they are also part of that urban planning they are also part of that urban area they are also contributing their best to um, develop that urban area so when their human resources are being used when their human resources are being used for the development of that area we are also supposed to take care of their other basic needs so in this vision urban poor and women they occupy special attention in the vision of national urban sanitation policy. The overall objective of this ur national urban sanitation policy is to transform urban India into community driven, totally sanitized, healthy and livable cities and towns. Of course, this was the overall objective of the program. So, far as specific goals are concerned, these specific goals are as follows. Awareness generation and behavior change. Of course, this term behavior change is typically related to our topic that is sociology of sanitation. Because when we say that awareness generation, of course, we are supposed to create awareness among the people. When we talk about behavioral change, as we all know that and we keep on discussing that sanitation is not simply related to scarcity of resources, it is not simply related to economy, but it is more related to behavioral change. If we change our behavior, if we nurture that good practice related to sanitation, number of things can be done. So, behavioral aspect are also part of this uh, specific goals in the national urban sanitation policy and we also know that this is the prime concern of sociology of sanitation that how to change socio-cultural norms, how to change behavioral aspect of the individual. So, that even if one is not able to change the economic condition through behavioral change and through cultural change, we can make a good society 
from sanitation and environmental angle. So, this is another specific goal. Next stage open defecation free cities, of course, it is part and parcel of and in every program we are supposed to think that any city or any town should remain open defecation free. Next is integrated city wide sanitation. Of course, there are different agencies working in different towns and cities. So, there is supposed to these all agencies are supposed to be integrated. They all are supposed to work together and so that because ultimate aim of all these agencies to perform wonderful and to promote environment and sanitation in that particular area. Another program is Nirmal Bharat Avyan. Nirmal Bharat Avyan started in 2012. Total sanitation campaign which was started in 1999 was renamed as Nirmal Bharat Avyan. The objective of Nirmal Bharat Avyan is to accelerate the sanitation coverage in rural areas so as to comprehensively cover the rural community through renewed strategies and saturation approach. Nirmal Bharat Avyan envisages covering the entire community for saturated outcomes with a view to create Nirmal Gram Panchayat. Of course, the term Nirmal itself is talking about the clean. So, if everything will be clean, everything will be safe, everything will be ok, then we may say that well we are achieving the target related to sanitation and environment. Then of course, recently we all are talking about Swachh Bharat Avyan, Swachh Bharat Avyan. Of course, Swachh Bharat Avyan or Clean India Mission. We all are aware and everybody is talking about that because these days the particular avian is going on. We all are aware with the contributions of Mahatma Gandhi to the field of sanitation and environment. Mahatma Gandhi is known for cleanliness drive and as we discussed for Mahatma Gandhi sanitation was more important compared to independence. You can just imagine that nowadays we may not think about independence in that way, but when we were not free during that time, if one talks about that sanitation is first and second is uh, independence or if we will not successfully do the sanitation, what is the use of Swaraj? If such statements are made by an individual, you can understand that how sanitation was important for that personality. So, just to pay homage to Mahatma Gandhi or just to recall the contributions made by Mahatma Gandhi on 2nd October 2014, just to fulfill Mahatma Gandhi's dream of clean and hygienic India, Swachh Bharat Avyan was launched by the Honorable Prime Minister of India on 2nd October 2014. Primary aim of the Swachh Bharat Avyan was to provide sanitation facilities to every family including toilets, solid and liquid waste disposal systems, village cleanliness and safe and adequate drinking water supply by 2nd October 2019. 2019 2nd October is already passed, it was aimed in 2014 within 5 years gap it was thought that we will be able to achieve. Of course, we are trying our best to achieve that goal and the Swachh Bharat Avyan is working in wonderful way. The Swachh Bharat Avyan has two missions, two sub missions, one is Swachh Bharat Avyan Gramin that is for rural area and another is that Swachh Bharat Mission that is dedicated to urban area. So, Swachh Bharat Mission Gramin and Swachh Bharat Mission Urban, there are two sub missions associated to Swachh Bharat Avyan or Clean India Mission. It has two phases, Swachh Bharat Avyan has two phases, one is phase one of Swachh Bharat Mission lasted 
till October 2019 and now we are in second phase. Phase 2 is being implemented between 2020-21 and 2024-25 to help cement the work of phase 1. The second phase in which we are right now is there that well we achieved a number of things during the first phase of its implementation, but certain things could not be achieved by us. We are trying our best in the second phase of this mission that well certainly we will achieve all the targets in the second phase of Swachh Bharat mission. So, we all are working towards that and you may be from different areas, you should also try your best that in second phase we are supposed to achieve all the goals, we are supposed to fulfill the dreams of Mahatma Gandhi by making India a clean. The main objectives of Swachh Bharat Abhiyan or Clean India Mission are like that to promote cleanliness and hygiene in a holistic manner. When it says holistic manner, of course, it is not simply related to your classroom, your workplace, your family, but wherever you go, your nearby areas, you should try to maintain hygienic condition. We are not supposed to be localized, we are not supposed to focus on simply my surrounding that all, okay, I am staying in this area, this area is very clean. Of course, not when we say that holistic manner means where it is possible, we are supposed to maintain the sanitation, we are supposed to maintain the cleanliness in each and every part of our society. To reduce the incidence of open defecation, as we have been discussing that, that open defecation is very harmful for the society. So, of course, we are supposed to stop that unhealthy practice of open defecation. The next, and next is to bring improvement in the quality of life in rural areas. Of course, as we all know that in rural areas, we are supposed to improve the quality of life because quality of life plays a major role in individual's life, not only from environment and sanitation point of view or from economic angle, but equally from moral and psychological angle also because if they stay in that area, if they think that yes, we belong to rural area, we are having that rich culture and tradition and wherever they will go, they will promote their local knowledge, they will feel confident that yes, all these things are there and in that particular way, if they will develop their personality, it will be helpful for the resources of any nation. So, we, we are supposed to take benefit of the rural people by improving their mindset, by improving their quality of life. Next is to encourage the concept of sustainable sanitation practices. Of course, as we all know that when we know that sustainability is there, sustainability in sanitation or any field is related to that well, we should use if it is related to sanitation, we should use it and if others are there, then they should also be able to use that or if we are providing water. Today, water is supplied to that toilet, tomorrow and day after tomorrow, we are also supposed to ensure that continuity should be there. It is not like that today water is supplied or today we are maintaining that clean, but today what can you do? You are supposed to understand that well, I will have to do tomorrow also, I will have to do next day also, that sustainability should be there. It was noticed that sometimes we fail to maintain that sustainability when that campaign is started, when particular occasion is there, we try our best to do that, but after 2, 3, 4 days, we stop doing that. It should not be there. We are supposed to maintain sustainability in that sanitation aspect also. To create awareness about health and hygiene, people, they are generally, uh, it is understood that sometimes they are not aware of all those aspects related to health and hygiene. It is surprising that we are not even aware about all those things which are part of our body. So, health and hygiene awareness should be started. People, others should also know that yes, 
these are the different aspects of my health and hygiene, these are the bad as behavioral part, these are the good behavioral part or if we follow that, if we not follow that, how is it going to improve or deteriorate my situation. So, health and hygiene related aspects or its related information should be communicated to each and every one in the society and it is the responsibility of those who are literate, those who are learning and as a part of that you viewers, you are supposed to because you are aware and you can spread that message. So, you take that responsibility that I will spread, I will spread the message related to health, sanitation, sanitation and hygiene related aspects to my friends, to my relatives, to my near and dear ones. So, that at least I can perform my moral responsibility in a wonderful way. Next is to help India reach to India sustainable development goal. As we discuss while we were discussing the international aspect that sustainable development goal 6 SDG 6 is dedicated to environment and sanitation. Our achievement is also noteworthy so far as SDG is concerned. We still supposed to that we should keep on continuing all those good things which are required for achieving the target of SDG. Of course, we are on the right track, but when we say we are on the right track, it is necessary that SDG 6 is important at the same time for example, if we ignore the SDG 5, if we ignore the SDG 1, 2, it is not possible to achieve all the targets because all these SDGs are correlated. So, it is our responsibility right now to think about that well, what can be done for achieving the SDG 6 at least that is related to environment and sanitation. Its objective continues like that, its next objective is to encourage cost effective sanitation efforts. Again, cost effective term is part and parcel of number of programs because we know that when we talk about any promotion, any campaign in Indian society, we know the economic condition of our friends, our relatives, our co-workers. So, cost effective plays important role in that. Any good program can be launched, any good initiatives can be taken, but if it requires money more than which a common man can afford, what is the utility of that program? So, cost effectiveness is most important part of that because economy does matter for a number of people and unless until it is cost effective, everyone will not be able to afford that. Next is to develop community managed sanitation system. It is wonderful idea, why to wait for others, why to wait for any other agency, why to wait for any other authority. If we the members of the community, we decide that yes, this is my responsibility, that is your responsibility, that is their responsibility. We the members of the society will manage all those issues related to sanitation. It is a wonderful idea because it is at one time it helps in promoting the social network and this is the beauty of the society that it depends upon the correlation between number of individuals. So, when community will do that, first of all we will consider it is my own responsibility. Another we may think that if they are doing their job, they are doing job, why not we. So, each and every individuals of the society will start working by that it is not simply that we all are working, it will minimize the gap existing between two different castes, it will minimize the gap existing between two different genders it will minimize the gap existing between two different religious groups. If we all members of the particular area will think that yes, we will work together so far as sanitation services are concerned, then that will be helpful for sanitation and environment also and that will be helpful for future of that community or that society also. To focusing on scientific solid and liquid waste management system, this is another objectives of Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. Another is to create positive impact on gender and promote social inclusion. Well dear learners, again we are talking about gender and social inclusion. 
these two aspects are related to our discussions based on two different lectures, gender aspect which was part of our sanitation and gender. We discussed that how is gender related to sanitation, because as we all know that opendification is problematic for both male and female, but it is more problematic for female. Same way opendification is related to number of other things which generally we may not understand. Opendification is responsible for number of eve teasing cases, number of rape cases, number of other aspects related to drop out of school, number of physiological and other aspects related to women. So, open defecation is more problematic for women that we are supposed to understand at the same time it is related to stigma and it is related to patriarchal mindset prevalent in the society. So, when we say that gender issue of course, we are supposed to pay a special attention to gender and sanitation, so that women can feel that yes, we are like other counterpart, I mean as male are human being, we are also human being and it is our responsibility to respect their dignity and give them proper place in the society. So, in this case gender issue is specifically mentioned and we discuss that a lot during our discussion in gender and sanitation. Same when it is related to promote social inclusion. We devote one lecture we have already devoted in discussing caste and sanitation. In that we discuss the issues related to caste. Here we are supposed to understand the importance of social inclusion. If we discuss that in society all the members they are supposed to live equal life, they are supposed to live the life with dignity. We can not imagine that in any society one uh, there is clear cut hierarchy, one is below, another is above. It should be minimized because they all are human being. And when we are thinking that this total, so this Swachh Bharat Abhiyan is dedicated to Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi himself was against any type of untouchability and against any type of manual scavenging. And he himself used to clean his own toilet, so that others may start copying. This social inclusion is related to aspects of manual scavenging. In Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, we are supposed to minimize that clear cut gap between two different castes. We are supposed to minimize the cases of manual scavenging, because manual scavengers or the particular caste belonging to particular area, they are also human being. We are not supposed to think that this is the job of that caste only or in other way they are doing that job. So, they are so called of bad category. Doing job whether this job or that job is equal, no job can be considered as so called good or bad. There should not be any hierarchy in job that you are doing this job, I am doing that job. So, you are inferior, I am superior, such type of mentally should not work. So, dear learners, we are discussing the aims of this Swachh Bharat Avyan and as we discussed that the aim of this Avyan is to fulfill the dreams of Mahatma Gandhi. If Mahatma Gandhi can think of the equality based on the caste, he thinks that well there should not be any discriminatory practice against manual scavengers. It is right time that even if in any area a little bit that practice is there, we are supposed to stop that practice immediately, because there should not be any caste based discrimination. There should not be any discrimination based on that you belong to that caste, you are associated to uh, the cleaning toilet, you are associated to doing the manual scavenging etcetera. So, you are inferior. All these things are part of the job, whether x job or y job, these all jobs cannot be categorized as good or bad. So, dear learners, you all are supposed to practice that there should not be any discriminatory practice based on any caste hierarchy. Then we will be able to achieve that to create a positive impact on gender and promote social inclusion. So, for social inclusion and for gender equality, we are supposed to keep in mind that yes, we are supposed to fulfill the dreams of Mahatma Gandhi. Well, when we talk about that fulfilling the dreams of Mahatma Gandhi, we all are supposed to understand 
that well based on caste, based on gender, based on any discriminatory practice. These things are part and parcel of our society. When we think that well sanitation and environment is important part of society, just try to understand dear learners that with these things we can think of, of doing overall change and moving towards good thing not only from sanitation angle, but from other angle also. Just imagine any society where gender equality is there, any society where there is no caste based discrimination, any society where there is no religion based discrimination. Then we can think that yes, we are living in a wonderful society. So, with the help of these different schemes, it is not only useful for achieving target related to sanitation, related to environment, but of course, these things are necessary for achieving the overall good condition in the society, so that everyone can stay healthy life. Everyone can say that yes, we are part of the society, no one will be considered as inferior, no one will be considered as superior and in that particular way, we will be able to achieve the targets related to different schemes of sanitation and we can say that yes, our Indian society is very good. Well, next let us move to discussing national rural sanitation and hygiene strategy 2012 to 2022. It is towards Nirmal Bharat means clean India. The objectives of national rural sanitation and hygiene strategy is like that. Creation of totally sanitized environments by 2017, the end of open defecation and achievement of a clean environment where human fecal waste is safely contained and disposed. Next is adoption of improved hygiene practices by 2020, all people in the rural areas, especially children and caregivers adopt safe hygiene practices during all times. And another that is solid and liquid waste management by 2022, effective management of solid and liquid waste such that the village environment is kept clean in all times. Dear learners, it is clear that when we talk about cleaning environment in particular society or maintaining that hygienic condition, we all are supposed to understand that it is not simply related to toilet, related to cleaning particular area. One of the important problems that we face in area is also for example, disposing of used needles because we are using disposable syringes and if we are not careful in disposing of the needles or disposable syringes, it is not only going to affect the human, but it is going to affect the animals also. So, when we are destroying our material, when our we dispose of number of things in particular area, there are different provisions, there are different systems in every area, but the need of the hour is that we have discussed a number of plans, number of schemes, number of objectives with the vision etcetera. These objectives cannot be achieved without our 100 percent dedication to these area or in some of the areas, if we think that we belong to this area, we belong to this caste, we belong to this religion, this is not totally related to me. Of course, we are talking about environment and sanitation it is not limited to your local area. You are supposed to think at larger level that if my area is good, others area is bad, how can we claim that well, I am taking breath in good air. Of course, that air is not localized in particular area, that environment is not simply limited to your area, because in other area that is also going to be affected by your efforts. Simple logic is that when we are thinking that okay, these are the different schemes of government of India or at your local level, you may belong to different states, different union territories, there are number of other schemes at local level which are there 
for which needs your support, which needs your attraction, which needs your cooperation. You all are supposed to, maybe you all, you all are not directly part of that implementation, uh, implementing agency or you are not part of that authority or the group of people, those who are looking after, but you are Indian citizen, you are member of the particular society. It is your responsibility that how to promote the particular program, how to make efforts at my own level or when you are training your children, when you are training your colleagues, when you are creating awareness among your fellow mates, you will feel satisfied that yes, I am doing something for environment and sanitation issue in my area. Dear learners, these different schemes are there. We are having number of great people, they keep on talking about all these things. We are having wonderful historical background, we are having number of things in our tradition. We are supposed to highlight all those tradition that is prevalent in my area. We are also supposed to sit with our grandparents, we are also supposed to sit our other senior members of the family or the society. We should learn something that okay, these different practices were there during your time. What are the benefits of these different tradition, these different culture in that area? Dear learners, I assure you, number of good things are there in your area. You are simply supposed to devote time with your senior people of your area. You sit with them, you will learn with them and then you will learn how to maintain your tradition, how to maintain that sustainability. Of course, if there are a few bad things, you think that it is not appropriate according to today's modern world. Of course, those few things can be detached, you may detach yourself from few those bad things if you think that it is not possible to follow or if I, I will follow that, this is going to adversely affect the society. But at that cost, you are not supposed to ignore number of good things that is there in your society, number of good steady material that is prevalent in your area, number of books written by the scholars of your area and in those books, they specifically mention the traditional things, the number of other things which can be practiced. There are number of things number of plants in your area, number of good trees in your area, you can get the benefit of that. At the same time, when we say that there are number of practices, for example, you can protect one tree, you can plant particular tree and if you think that planting this particular tree is going to affect the members of my family, going to affect my future generation, that will give you a different type of satisfaction. So simply planting different trees, maintaining cultural tradition that you are having and of course following all those traditions and systems of related to your country, your society, your religious group that is going to be affected by your understanding and this your understanding with the help of the knowledge related to sociology of sanitation will prove fruitful for you not only from sanitation angle, environment angle, but for your satisfaction also, but for your personality development also. Because as you all know the dear learners that you cannot be satisfied unless until your friends, your relatives and other dear and near ones will remain satisfied. So it is necessary that yes, there, are, there may be different programs by the government of India, by the state agency or by the UN agency different other surveys are there and as you know that there are different surveys and the campaigns are there that well, my city is declared best, my city is declared second or third or what is the rank of my city. Do remember, you might have noticed there are different sanitation related surveys are also. When it appears in the different newspaper, then you immediately try to locate where my city lies. So, if rank of your city is not good, rank of your area is not good, you necessarily, you may not satisfy with the ranking of your city. It is the high time, why to waste your time in just that, what will be rank of my city next year? You are supposed to 
try your best, you should start right now that I will try my best whether any typical agency, any dedicated agency will work or not or my other friends are working or not. I will try my best that my family will remain uh, clean or I will stop sending or going for authentication or I will stop any discriminatory practice re related to caste, related to gender and other things. So, I will try my best that my city, my area, my town should occupy the good rank in next round of the surveys related to sanitation. These are a few efforts you are supposed to do and for making these efforts you are not supposed to get any special package from any government agency, you are not supposed to get any type of certificate that okay you are supposed to do. These are based on the self concerns at the same time these things are based on self motivation. You are supposed to motivate yourself not only simply yourself, but if you think that others are also my friends are also like minded people, you can share all those learnings which we discussed in these uh, different lectures related to sociology of sanitation that yes, I am having the knowledge of all these schemes, I am having the knowledge of the gen discriminatory practices related to sanitation, I am having the understanding of issues which can be discussed related to sanitation and environment. And dear learners, if you share all these ideas with your friends, Rest assured that no one can stop India achieving not only the SDG 6 target, but to declare ourselves that yes, we are from health angle, hygiene angle, environment angle, we are wonderful. And for that, our contribution at local level is most important. And this is the benefit of learning this course on sociology of sanitation. Dear learners, in today's lecture, I have devoted number of things related to different schemes, different policies, different plans, different uh, award related to Nirmal Puraskar, etc. You are supposed to understand that what is the benefit of all these schemes, what is the benefit of all these programs, is it typically related to me or you are supposed to think upon these issues that well. Why are we supposed to implement, supposed to talk about these programs? These things which is there mentioned in these programs can be considered at local level or without any government initiatives, I can also do hard work, I can also think about improvement in my society, I can also think about that yes, what is going on or at my own level any effort can be done by me. It is your responsibility that while discussing or understanding all these schemes related to different uh, schemes related to sanitation and hygiene, you are supposed to understand. And at the same time, we are uh, crossing in the phase of the Swachh Bharat Avyan or Clean India Mission. You think yourself that what was my contribution in fulfilling the dreams of Mahatma Gandhi, whether I am making any effort in making his dream fulfilled or if it is not, what can be done at my individual level? Is not it my own responsibility to fulfill the dreams of Mahatma Gandhi or it is a dream of only at national level that only the people those who are there at national level, they are supposed to? Of course not. We the members of the society, we are part and parcel of the members of the Indian society. We are part and parcel of national level. When at national level it is assumed that yes, we will fulfill the dreams of Mahatma Gandhi. What should be my role as a citizen of India? What should be my role in fulfilling the dreams of Mahatma Gandhi by achieving the target related to Swachh Bharat Abhiyan or Clean India movement? Moment. These things are that well, Clean India Mission or Swachh Bharat Avyan should be part of my life and it should not be that every plans and policies are for particular period that well, this is only for this much period, the cleanliness drive should be stopped or cleanliness drive should be continued. That we are supposed to 
think upon the issues related to the targets and achievements. It is not like that, that simply we focus on achieving particular target, but of course, it is our responsibility that we should also think that what are those actions, what are those steps can be taken by we people. If we keep on adjusting ourselves that yes, it is good for my society, it is good for my environment, it is good for my healthy lifestyle, what can be my contribution, how can I make any effort in developing the society or leading the society towards healthy society, towards happy society or where I can be a model for my nearby village, I can be a model for my nearby areas that well, that society is very good, that society is contributing towards sanitation and healthy lifestyle, I should also do. So, keeping in mind these different targets are related to different schemes and policies, dear learners, you are supposed to think that okay, these are the different plans and policies, but apart from that, we are supposed to adapt according to our culture, according to our need, according to our requirement, because these programs are at larger level for the whole nation and as you all know that we are having different diversities existing in our area. One cannot imagine anything which can be equally applicable to each and every part of the Indian society. So, every society has different requirements, every society had different needs and it is our responsibility that what are the needs of our own society and how to adapt these policies and programs and how to adjust ourselves related to health and sanitation and environment. Dear learners, this is all about today's lecture based on different programs and policies of government of India related to sanitation. I have taken help from certain materials and I am giving you the list of those suggested readings. Muhammad Akram's Sociology of Sanitation, H. M. Johnson's Sociology of Systematic Introduction, B. K. Nagla's Sociology of Sanitation, Richard Pais' book Sociology of Sanitation, Bindeswar Pathak's edited book Sociology of Sanitation, Environmental Sanitation, Public Health and Social Deprivation, Asis Saxena's book Sociology of Sanitation, Anil Vaghala's book Sociology of Sanitation. Dear learners, in next last episode, we will discuss the tenth lecture will be dedicated to sanitation and the role of Sulab sanitation movement in sanitation. This is all about today's lecture. Thanks a lot for your patience, hearing and viewing. I am uh, A.K. Sharma and I am professor of sociology at IIT Kanpur. The question I am going to address is uh, what is urbanization? Urbanization is essentially the process of population concentration, which means that if more people start living in a smaller number of places or if the distribution of population uh, becomes more unequal, like more people living in places like Bombay, Calcutta, Mexico, uh, then we say that the urbanization is taking place. Essentially, it means increase in percentage of population living in areas or localities which are defined as urban. 
urbanization is a new phenomenon of course, a post industrial phenomenon. About 200 years ago hardly 5 percent population of the world lived in urban areas and today more than 50 percent population of the world is living in urban areas or localities which are classified as urban. 